I want to acknowledge everybody who's spoken in the debate so far, uh, and particularly thank those who are not government members of parliament uh, who have spoken in this debate and, and offered their condolences to, to the Labor Party generally as well. Um, there's been some beautiful speeches and it's deeply appreciated. Uh, I also want to acknowledge what the member for Gippsland uh, did. You, we're, we're very good in this place at saying nice things about people when they're not in the room. Uh, and to have had that moment in 90 second statements where a speech was delivered with complete generosity and love effectively on behalf of all of us was a real gift to the chamber and the only one of these speeches that, that Peter got to hear. Uh, and so I, I want to acknowledge that with deep appreciation. There's the first speeches are always powerful, but I'll never forget the moment of Peter letting us know in amongst jokes about her love of squash, telling us from the, that the cancer had returned. And so for effectively Peter's entire time as a member here, we knew there was a risk of today. Uh, and yet Peter acted like there wasn't in so many ways. Uh, sometimes we talk about uh, when someone passes away of a candle having been extinguished, but, but Peter Murphy was no candle. This was the entire New, New Year's Eve fireworks display uh, with all the colour, the vibrancy and, and thunder of it. At 90 second statements, you can always rev up the other side in your own with, with a, bit, a, bit of, a, a bit of anger or shouting and different people will do that at different times. But Peter would come in with a relaxed smile, stand her ground and this room would ignite and policy changes would happen. It's already been referred to that, uh, that, that speech she gave with respect to a wild policy that had been floated by the previous government with respect to superannuation. Peter came in, 90 seconds, smashed it. We never heard of the policy again. And that policy strength from Peter is something that I am so deeply grateful for. I'll say a bit more about, about arts policy, but let me start with workplace relations. When Peter here worked as a staffer uh, for, for Brennan O'Connor, the, the member for Gorton, a whole lot of the election commitments we are now delivering will forever have Peter Murphy's fingerprints all over them. And in particular, I say the, what has been the most heated of all of them in terms of whether you want to call it labour hire loophole or same job, same pay. That policy announced by Bill Shorten when the, the member for Gorton was the shadow minister, consultation, paperwork, right from the start, Peter Murphy was all over it. Uh, and as, as that bill finds its, finds its way through parliamentary debate, not as quickly as I'd hoped, uh, but I am very mindful that while I've had the honour to be the one to bring it into this House as the minister, uh, the work started a long time before me, and a whole lot of it very much is owned by, by Peter Murphy. I want to obviously extend condolences to Rod and conden extend condolences to her staff. Uh, it is sometimes said in this place, certainly never by me, as this concept of who has a real job and who doesn't. And staffers are often on the list of, if someone's been a former staffer, that somehow is not a real job. The staff in this place work so unbelievably hard. And Peter's staff, in a marginal seat, making sure that every single constituent group and inquiry is respectfully dealt with and resolved, are doing an incredible service in democracy, and we're doing so under Peter's leadership. And our Deep condolences to you. I want to tell just one story, and it's it's one story that I know no one else has told today because it's this one is mine. 
uh, to be able to tell. Peter used to get me down to the McClelland Sculpture, Sculpture Park Gallery quite a bit, a beautiful gallery in her electorate. Uh, and we get there, we do a little tour, some beautiful artworks there, and then uh, Peter would organise a what she'd call a round table, but it was always a packed house, uh, the sorts of crowds that only Peter Murphy could, could draw. Uh, and you'd have a couple of speeches and, the, and then a Q&A. And, &A. and branch members would be there, former members of parliament would be there, a series of artists and performers uh, would, would be there. And the Q&A happened in this form. And there's some photos that I, I never shared. I'll, I'll share them later today. Um, I'm just going to read the script. I got the office to pull out because we recorded the Q&A at the time, not realising it would ever be used for a purpose like this. Peter Murphy. I also just want to make it clear that I am not in the parliamentary band. Despite the fact that I have told Tony a number of times that I was chosen to play the glockenspiel at the Wagga Choral Festival when I was in grade six, it may be because they didn't want me to sing, but I still played the glockenspiel by the rivers of Babylon. Um, I responded, ah, can we settle something now? Peter, realising what was up to, said no and laughed, to which I responded, what are you doing Tuesday night or Wednesday night? Because only the other day I bought a new instrument for the band and it's a glockenspiel. <laughs> At which point uh, the, the people of Dunkley applauded. I said, seriously. Peter responded indignantly with these words, but I'm a published poet. <laughs> uh, I said, you're going to want to play with us on Wednesday night. Uh, at that point, Jimmy Barnes was going to join us. He ended up being sick on the day, but I said, uh, we're playing with the Wiggles and Jimmy Barnes. Should I write a glockenspiel part? The whole room cheered. Peter said, I don't know how to play fr flame trees on the glockenspiel. I said, no, we're doing long way to the top. So is Peter in the band? The crowd said, yes and thunderous applause, and Peter then responded with, my husband just walked in, he's going to say to me, quote, I've told you a million times, Peter, think before you speak. <laughs> uh, the, on the Tuesday night and the Wednesday night, Peter knew that when we got to the end, and we did this really bizarre merging of Blur's song two with toot toot chugga chugga big red car, uh, and there's a moment at the end of song two where I had Peter furiously as quickly as possible playing C sharp and F sharp at the same time. And so she came, sat in the back corner, practised, played it all right, uh, and then on stage insisted that she not be mic'd. Uh, so no microphone was there. You had to listen pretty hard to hear the glockenspiel. But dutifully, on stage in the Great Hall, with the Wiggles, with Dorothy the Dinosaur. Uh, Peter was there with her glockenspiel, uh, playing, playing with the Wiggles and going all the way through the long way to the top. The joy and the fun and the pictures that I've got of her, of her on stage, hamming it up, uh, the pictures afterwards of her chatting uh, to Simon and Lockie from the Wiggles. Uh, she didn't want to be there at all and once she decided she was in, she was all in. Uh, with that, that smile that we know uh, and, as I said, just part of that fireworks display with the thunder and the noise that when you watch it, you don't really think about the moment that it will ever come to an end. Uh, but I guess for us, for the changes that are only happening because of Peter, and for the joy that she's given all of us in, in so many ways. Uh, our thanks to her, our love for her, and our dedication that Peter, as a person, as a beautiful person, but also for the causes she represented, that flame never goes out. <laughs>